A feed-in tariff fit, fit, standard offer contract, advanced renewable tariff, or renewable energy payments is a policy mechanism designed to accelerate investment in renewable energy technologies. It achieves this by offering long-term contracts to renewable energy producers, typically based on the cost of generation of each technology. Rather than pay an equal amount for energy, however generated, technologies such as wind power and solar PV, for instance, are awarded a lower per kWh price, while technologies such as tidal power are offered a higher price, reflecting costs that are higher at the moment and allowing a government to encourage development of one technology over another. In addition, feed-in tariffs often include tariff digression. A mechanism according to which the price or tariff ratchets down over time. This is done in order to track and encourage technological cost reductions. The goal of feed-in tariffs is to offer cost-based compensation to renewable energy producers, providing price certainty and long-term contracts that help finance renewable energy investments. Topic. Description FITs typically include three key provisions Guaranteed grid access Long-term contracts Cost-based purchase price under a feed-in tariff, eligible renewable electricity generators, including homeowners, business owners, farmers and private investors, are paid a cost-based price for the renewable electricity they supply to the grid. This enables diverse technologies wind, solar, biogas, etc. to be developed and provides investors a reasonable return. This principle was explained in Germany's 2000 Renewable Energy Sources Act. The compensation rates have been determined by means of scientific studies, subject to the provision that the rates identified should make it possible for an installation, when managed efficiently, to be operated cost-effectively, based on the use of state-of-the-art technology and depending on the renewable energy sources naturally available in a given geographical environment. As a result, the tariff or rate may differ by technology, location e.g. rooftop or ground mounted for solar PV projects, size residential or commercial scale and region. The tariffs are typically designed to decline over time to track and encourage technological change. FITs typically offer a guaranteed purchase agreement for long 15 to 25 year periods. Performance-based rates give incentives to producers to maximize the output and efficiency of their project. As of 2010, feed-in tariff policies had been enacted in over 50 countries, including Algeria, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Brazil, Canada, China, Cyprus, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iran, Republic of Ireland, Israel, Italy, Kenya, the Republic of Korea, Lithuania, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Pakistan, Portugal, South Africa, Spain, Switzerland, Tanzania, Thailand, Turkey and the United Kingdom. In early 2012 in Spain, the Rajoy administration suspended the feed in tariff for new projects. In 2008, a detailed analysis by the European Commission concluded that well adapted feed in tariff regimes are generally the most efficient and effective support schemes for promoting renewable electricity. This conclusion was supported by other analyses, including by the International Energy Agency, the European Federation for Renewable Energy, as well as by Deutsche Bank. A feed-in tariff can differentiate on the basis of marginal cost. This is a theoretical alternative which is based on the concept of price differentiation Finan. Under such a policy the tariff price ranges from some level slightly above the spot rate to the price required to obtain the optimal level of production determined by the government. Firms with lower marginal costs receive prices on the lower end of the spectrum that increase their revenue but not by as much as under the uniform feed-in tariff. 
the more marginal producers face the higher tariff price. This version of the policy has two objectives. The first is to reduce the profitability of certain production sites. Many renewable sources are highly dependent on their location. For example, wind turbines are most profitable in windy locations, and solar plants are best at sunny locations. This means that generators tend to be concentrated at these most profitable sites. The differentiated tariff seeks to make less naturally productive sites more profitable and so spread out the generators which many consider to be an undesirable good in the area Finan. Imagine cutting down all the forests to build wind farms, this would not be good for the environment. This, however, leads to a less cost-effective production of renewable electricity as the most efficient sites are underutilized. The other goal of tariffs differentiated by marginal cost is to reduce the cost of the program Finan. Under the uniform tariff all producers receive the same price which is at times in gross excess of the price needed to incentivize them to produce. The additional revenue translates into profit. Thus, the differentiated tariff attempts to give each producer what it requires to maintain production so that the optimal market quantity of renewable energy production can be reached Finan, overall, and in light of incipient globalization, feed-in tariffs are posing increasing problems from the point of view of trade, as their implementation in one country can easily affect industries and policies of others, thus requiring an ideally global coordination of treatment and imposition of such policy instrument, which could be reached at the World Trade Organization. Topic. Compensation There are three methods of compensation. Feed-in tariff, compensation is above retail, and as the percentage of adopters increases, the fit is reduced to the retail rate. Net metering, allows producers to consume electricity from the grid, e.g., when the wind stops. Credits typically roll over to future periods. Payments to the utility or the consumer depend on net consumption. Power purchase agreement, pays for the generation of electricity and is normally below the retail rate, although in the case of solar can in some countries be higher, because solar in many countries generates at times of peak demand. Topic. History Topic. United States The first form of feed-in tariff under another name was implemented in the U.S. in 1978 under President Jimmy Carter, who signed the National Energy Act NEA. This law included five separate acts, one of which was the Public Utility Regulatory Policies Act PERPA. The purpose of the National Energy Act was to encourage energy conservation and develop new energy resources, including renewables such as wind, solar and geothermal power. Within PURPA was a provision that required utilities to purchase electricity generated from qualifying independent power producers at rates not to exceed their avoided cost. Avoided costs were designed to reflect the cost that a utility would incur to provide that same electrical generation. Different interpretations of PURPA prevailed in the 1980s. Some utilities and state utility commissions interpreted avoided costs narrowly to mean avoided fuel costs, while others chose to define avoided costs as the avoided long run marginal cost of generation. The long-run costs referred to the anticipated cost of electricity in the years ahead. This last approach was adopted by California in its standard offer contract number 4. Another provision included in the PURPA law was that utilities were prevented from owning more than 50% of projects. To encourage new entrants, to comply with PURPA, some states began offering standard offer contracts to producers. 
California's Public Utility Commission established a number of standard offer contracts, including Standard Offer No. 4 SO4, which made use of fixed prices, based on the expected long-run cost of generation. The long-run estimates of electricity costs were based on the belief widely held at the time that oil and gas prices would continue to increase. This led to an escalating schedule of fixed purchase prices, designed to reflect the long-run avoided costs of new electrical generation. By 1992, private power producers had installed approximately 1,700 megawatts of wind capacity in California, some of which is still in service today. The adoption of PURPA also led to significant renewable energy generation in states such as Florida, and Maine. This notwithstanding, PURPA retains negative connotations in the U.S. electricity industry. When oil and gas prices plummeted in the late 1980s, the standard offer contracts that were signed to encourage new renewable energy development seemed high by comparison. As a result, PURPA contracts came to be seen as an expensive burden on electricity ratepayers. Another source of opposition to PURPA stemmed from the fact that it was designed to encourage non utility generation. This was interpreted as a threat by many large utilities, particularly monopolistic suppliers. As a result of its encouragement of non-utility generation, PURPA has also been interpreted as an important step toward increasing competition. <laughs> Europe In 1990, Germany adopted its Stromenspacingsgesetz, Streg, or Law on Feeding Electricity into the Grid. The Streg required utilities to purchase electricity generated from renewable energy suppliers at a percentage of the prevailing retail price of electricity. The percentage offered to solar and wind power was set at 90% of the residential electricity price, while other technologies such as hydropower and biomass sources were offered percentages ranging from 65 to 80%. A project cap of 5 MW was included, while Germany's streg was insufficient to encourage costlier technologies such as photovoltaics, it proved relatively effective at encouraging lower-cost technologies such as wind, leading to the deployment of 4,400 megawatts of new wind capacity between 1991 and 1999, representing approximately one-third of the global capacity at the time. An additional challenge that Streg addressed was the right to interconnect to the grid. The Streg guaranteed renewable electricity producers grid access. Similar percentage-based feed-in laws were adopted in Spain, as well as in Denmark in the 1990s. <inaudible> <inaudible> Germany's Renewable Energy Sources Act Germany's feed-in law underwent a major restructuring in 2000 to become the Renewable Energy Sources Act 2000 German, Erneuerbare Energien Gesetz or EEG. The long title is an act on granting priority to renewable energy sources. In its new form, the act proved to be a highly effective policy framework for accelerating the deployment of renewables. Important changes included Purchase prices were based on generation cost, this led to different prices for different technologies and for projects of varying sizes. Utilities were allowed to participate. Rates were designed to decline annually based on expected cost reductions, known as tariff digressions. Since it was very successful, the German policy amended in 2004, 2009, and 2012 was often used as the benchmark against which other feed-in tariff policies were considered. Other countries followed the German approach. Long-term contracts are typically offered in a non-discriminatory manner to all renewable energy producers. Because purchase prices are based on costs, efficiently operated projects yield a reasonable rate of return. This principle was stated in the Act. The compensation rates 
have been determined by means of scientific studies, subject to the proviso that the rates identified should make it possible for an installation, when managed efficiently, to be operated cost-effectively, based on the use of state-of-the-art technology and depending on the renewable energy sources naturally available in a given geographical environment. Feed-in tariff policies typically target a 5 to 10 percent return. The success of photovoltaics in Germany resulted in a drop in electricity prices of up to 40% during peak output times, with savings between €520 million Euros and €840 million Euros for consumers. Savings for consumers have meant conversely reductions in the profit margin of big electric power companies, who reacted by lobbying the German government, which reduced subsidies in 2012. The increase in the solar energy share in Germany also had the effect of closing gas and coal-fired generation plants, often all power produced is fed to the grid, which makes the system work rather like a PPA according to the disambiguation above, however, there is no need for a purchase agreement with a utility, but the feed-in tariff is state-administered, so the term feed-in tariff, German, Einspeisetarif is usually used. Since around 2012, other types of contracts became more usual, because PPAs were supported and for small-scale solar projects, direct use of power became more attractive when the feed-in tariff became lower than prices for power bought. On 1 August 2014, a revised Renewable Energy Sources Act entered into force. Specific deployment corridors now stipulate the extent to which renewable energy is to be expanded in the future and the funding rates feed -in tariffs for new capacity will gradually no longer be set by the government, but will be determined by auction, starting with ground-mounted solar plant. This represented a major change in policy and will be further extended as of 2017 with tender processes for onshore and offshore wind. Topic. Effects on electricity rates FITs have both increased and decreased electricity prices. Increases in electricity rates occurred when the funding for the feed in tariff scheme is provided by ratepayers via a surcharge in their electricity bills. In Germany, this approach to funding the feed in tariff added 6.88 CEUR per kilowatt hour to the electricity rate for residential consumers in 2017. However, renewable energy can reduce spot market prices via the merit order effect, the practice of using higher cost fossil fuel facilities only when demand exceeds the capacity of lower cost facilities. This has led to electricity price reductions in Spain, Denmark and Germany. Topic. Grid parity Grid parity occurs when the cost of an alternative technology for electricity production matches the existing average for the area. Parity can vary both in time i.e. during the course of the day and over the course of years and in space i.e. geographically. The price of electricity from the grid varies widely from high-cost areas such as Hawaii and California, to lower-cost areas such as Wyoming and Idaho. In areas with time-of-day pricing, rates vary over the course of the day, rising during high-demand hours e.g. 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. and declining during low-demand hours. In some areas wind power, landfill gas and biomass generation are already lower cost than grid electricity. Parity has already been achieved in areas that use feed-in tariffs. For example, generation cost from landfill gas systems in Germany are currently lower than the average electricity spot market price. In remote areas, electricity from solar photovoltaics can be cheaper than building new distribution lines to connect to the transmission grid. Topic: <laughs> Policy alternatives and complements. 
Renewable Portfolio Standards RPS, and subsidies create protected markets for renewable energy. RPS require utilities to obtain a minimum percentage of their energy from renewable sources. In some states, utilities can purchase Renewable Energy Certificates USA, Renewable Energy Certificate System EU, Renewable Energy Certificates Registry OUST, to meet this requirement. These certificates are issued to renewable energy producers based on the amount of energy they feed into the grid. Selling the certificates is another way for the renewable producer to supplement its revenues. Certificate prices fluctuate based on overall energy demand and competition among renewable producers. If the amount of renewable energy produced exceeds the required amount, certificate prices may crash, as happened with carbon trading in Europe. This can damage the economic viability of the renewable producers. Quota systems favor large, vertically integrated generators and multinational electric utilities, if only because certificates are generally denominated in units of 1 megawatt hour. They are also more difficult to design and implement than in FIT, mandating dynamic tariffs for customer-initiated meter upgrades including for distributed energy uptake may be a more cost-effective way to accelerate the development of renewable energy. Topic. By country Feed-in tariff laws were in place in 46 jurisdictions globally by 2007. Information about solar tariffs may be found in a consolidated form, however not all of the countries are listed in this source. Topic. Algeria To cover the additional costs of producing electricity from renewables and for the costs of diversification, producers of electricity from renewables receive a bonus for each kWh produced, marketed or consumed. For electricity generated from solar or radiant heat only, the bonus is 300% of the price per kWh of electricity produced by the market operator defined by Law 0201 of 22 Du El Cata 1422 corresponding to 5 February 2002 until the minimum contribution of solar energy represents 25% of all primary energy. For electricity generated from facilities using solar thermal systems solar gas hybrid, the bonus is 200% of the price per kWh. For contributions of solar energy below 25%, said bonus is paid in the following conditions. The price of electricity is fixed by the Craig Gas and Electricity Regulatory Commission. According to the last decision which fixed it, the consumer pays his electricity as below. 1 Algerian dinar and 77 centimes per kilowatt hour for a consumption which is lower than 41.6 kilowatt hours per month. 4 Algerian dinars and 17 centimes per kilowatt hour for a consumption which is higher than 41.6 kilowatt hours per month. The other consumers, industry, agriculture, dot etc. They pay 4 Algerian dinars and 17 centimes per kilowatt hour. The feed-in tariff provides bonuses for electricity generated by cogeneration of 160%, taking into account thermal energy use of 20% of all primary energy used. The bonuses for solar-generated electricity and cogeneration are cumulative. Remuneration of the generated electricity is guaranteed over the whole plant lifetime. Australia Feed-in tariffs were introduced in 2008 in South Australia and Queensland, 2009 in the Australian Capital Territory and Victoria and 2010 in New South Wales, Tasmania and Western Australia. The Northern Territory offers only local feed-in tariff schemes. 
A uniform federal scheme to supersede all state schemes was proposed by Tasmanian Greens Senator Christine Milne, but not enacted. By mid-2011, feed-in tariff in NSW and ACT had been closed to new generators, as the installed capacity cap had been reached. In NSW, both the feed-in tariff and the cap were cut, due to the overly generous original settings. The new conservative Victorian government replaced the original feed-in tariff with a less generous transitional feed-in tariff of 25 cents per kilowatt-hour for any power generated excess to the generator's usage, pending the outcome of an inquiry by the Victorian Competition and Efficiency Commission. This does not meet the normal definition and has been referred to as a fake feed-in tariff. It is actually net metering with a payment for any kilowatt credit, instead of the normal roll over. Canada Ontario introduced a feed-in tariff in 2006, revised in 2009 and 2010, increasing from 42 per kWh to 80.2 per kWh for micro-scale 10 kW grid-tied photovoltaic projects, and decreasing to 64.2 per kWh for applications received after 2 July 2010. Applications received prior to then had until 31 May 2011 to install the system to receive the higher rate. Ontario's FIT program includes a tariff schedule for larger projects up to and including 10 MW solar farms at a reduced rate. As of April 2010, several hundred projects have been approved, including 184 large-scale projects, worth $8 billion. By April 2012, 12,000 systems had been installed and the rate decreased to 54.9 per kWh, for applications received after 1 September 2011. The price schedule as 2013 revised solar prices down to 28 to 38 per kWh. China. As of August 2011 a national solar tariff was issued at about 15 United States cents per kilowatt hour. China set a tariff for new onshore wind power plants in a move to help struggling project operators to realize profits. The National Development and Reform Commission NDRC, the country's economic planning agency, announced four categories of onshore wind projects, which according to region will be able to apply for the tariffs. Areas with better wind resources will have lower tariffs, while those with lower outputs will be able to access more generous tariffs. The tariffs are set at 51 fen, US 0.075, 5 British pence, 54 fen, 58 fen and 61 fen. These represent a significant premium on the average rate of 34 fen per kilowatt hour paid to coal-fired electricity generators. Topic: <laughs> Czech Republic Czech Republic introduced a tariff with law no 182,005 in 2005. The tariff is guaranteed for 15 to 30 years, depending on source. Supported sources are small hydropower up to 10 megawatts, biomass, biogas, wind and photovoltaics. As of 2010 the highest tariff was 12 Czech Korunas and 25 Hailers per kWh for small photovoltaic. In 2010 over 1,200 MW of photovoltaics were installed, but at the end of the year the fit was eliminated for larger systems, and reduced by 50% for smaller systems. In 2011, no photovoltaic systems were installed. Topic. Egypt 
On 20 September 2014, the Ministry of Electricity announced the new feed-in tariff fit pricing for electricity generated from new and renewable energy sources for households and private sector companies. The FIT will be applied in two phases. The official date for applying the first phase is 27 October 2014 and the second phase to be applied after two years from the first phase, which was launched on 28 October 2016. The energy tariff during the first phase has been divided into five categories, the purchase price per kilowatt-hour for residential solar generation is 0.848 Egyptian pounds. For non-residential installations of less than 200 kilowatts of installed generation capacity, the price rises to 0.901 Egyptian pounds per kilowatt-hour. The third category, between 200 and 500 kilowatts, will be paid 0.973 Egyptian pounds per kilowatt hour. The fourth and fifth categories of non-residential installations are paid in USD, to attract foreign investments, with the fourth category, ranging from 500 kilowatts to 20 megawatts, paid 0.136 United States dollars per kilowatt hour with 15% of tariff pegged at the exchange rate of 7 Egyptian pounds and 15 piastres per USD. The last category, which stretches between 20 to 50 megawatts, will be paid 0.1434 United States dollars per kilowatt hour. On the other hand, the purchase price for power generated from wind is based on the number of operating hours and is more elaborate than the solar tariff. It covers operating hours ranging from 2,500 up through 4,000 hours, with decreasing purchase rates ranging from 0.1148 United States dollars per kilowatt hour down to 0.046 United States dollars per kilowatt hour. In the second phase, the categories of solar generation were reduced to four, with the residential category tariff increased to 1.0288 Egyptian pounds per kilowatt hour. The second category, non-residential installations of less than 500 kilowatts has a purchase price of 1.0858 Egyptian pounds per kilowatt hour. The third and fourth categories, non-residential installations between 500 kilowatts and 20 megawatts and between 20 megawatts and 50 megawatts, have a purchase tariff of 0.0788 United States dollars per kilowatt hour and 0.084 United States dollars per kilowatt hour, respectively, with 30% of tariff pegged at the exchange rate of 8 Egyptian pounds and 88 piastres per USD, the government will purchase the electricity generated by investors, taking inflation into account, while consumption will be paid in local currency and depreciation rates reviewed after two years. The Ministry of Finance will provide concessional subsidized bank financing for households and institutions using less than 200 kilowatts at a rate of 4%, and 8% for 200 to 500 kilowatts. The government is preparing a law that would allow for state-owned lands to be made available for new energy production projects under a usufruct system in exchange for 2% of the energy produced. The electricity companies will be obligated to purchase and transport the energy. The new tariff system also includes a reduction in customs on new and renewable energy production supplies by 2% while the proportion of bank financing has been set at 40-60%. to The government hopes for new and renewable energy to account for 20% Egypt's total energy mix by 2020. Topic. European Union. The European Union does not operate or necessarily encourage feed-in tariff schemes, this being a matter for member countries. However feed-in tariff schemes in Europe have been challenged under European law for constituting illegal state aid. 
Prusenelektra brought a case concerning the German electricity feed in Act Stromenspacingsgesetz. In 2001, the European Court of Justice ECJ ruled that the German arrangements did not constitute state aid. The court concluded that Statutory provisions of a member state which, first, require private electricity supply undertakings to purchase electricity produced in their area of supply from renewable energy sources at minimum prices higher than the real economic value of that type of electricity, and, second, distribute the financial burden resulting from that obligation between those electricity supply undertakings and upstream private electricity network operators do not constitute state aid within the meaning of Article 92 of the EC Treaty. The proposed Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership TTIP trade agreement now threatens to overturn feed-in tariff schemes throughout the Europe Union. The draft energy chapter of the TTIP, leaked to The Guardian in July 2016, mandates that operators of energy networks grant access to gas and electricity on commercial terms that are reasonable, transparent and non-discriminatory, including as between types of energy. This would open feed in tariff schemes to commercial challenge, including that used by Germany. The Green MEP Claude terms stated, these TTIP proposals are completely unacceptable. They would sabotage EU legislators' ability to privilege renewables and energy efficiency over unsustainable fossil fuels. This is an attempt to undermine democracy in Europe. Topic. France The administrative procedure for ground-mounted PV systems was significantly modified in late 2009. The distinction between segments was essentially based on capacity, which determines the complexity of the administrative process. A call for tenders for PV projects above 250 kWp was launched on 15 September 2011. The projects were to be analyzed on multiple criteria, including the tariff rate requested by the applicant. <inaudible> Germany First introduced in 2000, the Renewable Energy Sources Act German, Erneber Energien Gesetz, is reviewed on a regular basis. Its predecessor was the 1991 Stromenspeisgesetz. As of May 2008, the cost of the program added about 1 euro and 1 cent, 1 United States dollar and 69 cents to each monthly residential electric bill. In 2012, the costs rose to 0.03592 euros per kilowatt hour. Nonetheless, for the first time in more than 10 years, electricity prices for household customers fell at the beginning of 2015. Tariff rates for PV electricity vary depending on system size and location. In 2009, tariffs were raised for electricity immediately consumed rather than supplied to the grid with increasing returns if more than 30% of overall production is consumed on site. This is to insensitivize demand-side management and help develop solutions to the intermittency of solar power. Tariff duration is usually 20 calendar years plus the year of installation. Systems receive the tariff in effect at the time of installation for the entire period. The feed-in tariff, in force since 1 August 2004, was modified in 2008. In view of the unexpectedly high growth rates, the depreciation was accelerated and a new category greater than 1,000 kWp was created with a lower tariff. The facade premium was abolished. In July 2010, the Renewable Energy Sources Act was again amended to reduce the tariffs by a further 16% in addition to the normal annual depreciation, as the prices for PV panels had dropped sharply in 2009. The contract duration is 20 years. 
Topic: <laughs> Greece. The PV feed-in tariffs for 2013 are Topic: <laughs> India. India inaugurated its latest solar power program to date on the 9th of January 2010. The Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission JNNSM, was officially announced by Prime Minister of India on 12 January 2010. This program aimed to install 20 gigawatts of solar power by 2022. The first phase of this program targeted 1,000 megawatts, by paying a tariff fixed by the Central Electricity Regulatory Commission of India. While in spirit this is a feed-in tariff, several conditions affect project size and commissioning date. The tariff for solar PV projects is fixed at 17 rupees and 90 paise, 0.397 United States dollars per kilowatt hour. Tariff for solar thermal projects is fixed 15 rupees and 40 paise USD 0.342 per kilowatt hours. Tariff will be reviewed periodically by the CERC. In 2015, the feed in tariff is about 7 rupees and 50 paise 0.125 United States dollars per kilowatt hour and is mostly applicable at utility level. The feed-in tariff for roof-top PV plants is still not applicable. Topic. Indonesia The Indonesian government, operating mainly through the State Electricity Corporation Perusahan Listrik Negara, or PLN, encouraged independent power producers IPPs, to invest in the electric power sector. Numerous IPPs are investing in large plants over 500 megawatts and many smaller plants such as 200 megawatts and smaller. To support this investment, Power Purchase Agreement PPA arrangements are agreed with the PLN. Prices vary widely from relatively low prices for large coal-based plants such as the Serban coal plant which began operations in late 2012 to higher prices for smaller geothermal plants producing more expensive power from distant locations such as the Wayang Windu geothermal plant in West Java. Indonesia has made a range of different FIT regulations for different forms of renewable electricity generation, for example geothermal energy and solar photovoltaic electricity generation. These regulations mandate the price that should be paid by PLN to the IPP in various different circumstances, provided that preconditions are met. Topic. Iran The Renewable Energy Organization of Iran Suna, first introduced a feed-in tariff in 2008. A purchase price of 1300 rials per kilowatt hour 900 rial per kilowatt hour for four nighttime hours was set for electricity from all types of renewable resources. In 2013 the Ministry of Energy introduced new feed-in tariffs, which was set at 4,442 rials per kilowatt-hour 15 United States cents. The government set conditions are getting better and there are high feed-in tariffs FITs. FITs were recently raised and are now set at a reasonable 18 United States cents per kilowatt-hour for wind. The fits for solar panels below 10 MWP has been decreased by 27% from 4 2016. It is now 4,900 RLs per kilowatt hour. Equals 14 cents per kilowatt hour. In 2016, governments modified the tariff and differentiate tariff for each type of renewable technology. Equals Topic Ireland equals 
ReFit 3 supports the medium and large scale production of electricity from bioenergy sources such as biomass, biomass CHP, and anaerobic digestion CHP. The ReFit scheme is administered by the Department of Communications Energy and Natural Resources. DCENR. The scheme was put in place following extensive lobbying by industrial representative bodies such as the Irish Bioenergy Association and the Micro Energy Generation Association. Residential and micro scale solar, wind, hydro, and CHP receives no grant aid, no subsidy, and no tax deductions are available. No feed in tariffs are available for these customers, and net metering is similarly unavailable. Cooperative and privately shared electricity between separate properties is illegal. A9C per kilowatt-hour feed-in tariff was available from Electric Ireland until December 2014, when it was withdrawn without replacement. Income from this feed-in tariff was subject to income tax at up to 58%. No other micro-scale feed-in tariffs are available. Homeowners with grid-connected micro-generation systems are charged a €9.45 per billing cycle low usage surcharge for importing less than 2 kilowatt hours per day or being a net exporter of energy in a billing period equals <laughs> topic israel equals on 2 June 2008, the Israeli Public Utility Authority approved a feed-in tariff for solar plants. The tariff is limited to a total installation of 50 MW during seven years, whichever is reached first, with a maximum of 15 kWp installation for residential and a maximum of 50 kWp for commercial. Bank Hapolim offered 10-year loans for the installation of solar panels. The National Infrastructures Ministry announced that it would expand the feed-in tariff scheme to include medium-sized solar power stations ranging from 50 kW to 5 MW. The new tariff scheme caused solar company Sunday Solar Energy to announce that it would invest $133 million to install photovoltaic solar arrays on kibbutzim, which are social communities that divide revenues amongst their members equals topic Italy equals Italy introduced a feed in tariff in February 2007 by 2011 Italy installed 7128 megawatts behind only Germany 7500 megawatts and reduced the fit equals Topic. Japan equals an fit of 42 yen 0 0.525 United States dollars per kilowatt hour for 10 years for systems less than 10 kilowatts and 40 yen 50 United States cents for larger systems but for 20 years began on the 1st of July 2012. The rate was to be reviewed annually, for subsequently connected systems, to secure the second round price of 37 yen and 8 sen per kilowatt hour for a 20 year PPA term. Foreign investors must complete the following actions by 31 March 2014. 1. Acquire firm rights to a project site by either purchasing land, entering into a lease or obtaining a firm written commitment from a landowner to make a project site available. 2. Submit an application for consultation and grid connection to the electricity utility that will purchase power from the relevant renewable energy project i.e. the utility that operates in the geographical area in which the project is based, and 3. Obtain approval for their generation facility from the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry METI, 
Under Article 6 of the Renewable Energy Law, projects that complete the above steps by 31 March 2014 will be eligible to enter into a 20-year PPA with the relevant electricity utility at a price of ¥37.08 per kWh for 20 years. The Netherlands The Dutch cabinet agreed on 27 March 2009 to implement some parts of a feed-in tariff in response to the global financial crisis. The proposed regulation may adjust the quota incentive system. As of the summer of 2009, the Netherlands operated a subsidy system. The subsidy budget has a quota for diverse types of energy, at several tens of million euros. The wind budget for wind was hardly used, because the tariffs are too low. The 2009 budget for wind on land was 900 megawatts INCL unused 400 megawatts from 2008, only 2.5 megawatts was used. Dutch utilities have no obligation to buy energy from wind parks. The tariffs change annually. This created uncertain investment conditions. The subsidy system was introduced in 2008. The previous 2003 subsidy scheme Ministerial Regeling Milukwalited Elektriciteitsprodukt I Ministerial Regulation for Environmental Electricity Production which was funded by charging €100 Euro per household annually on top of energy taxes stopped in 2006 because it was seen as too expensive. In 2009, Dutch wind parks were still being built with grants from the old scheme. The old and new subsidy scheme was funded from the general budget. A feed-in tariff was briefly adopted in 2011, but ended a month later, in February. Topic. Portugal Under the Portuguese energy policy, feed-in tariffs are offered to renewable sources except large hydro as well as micro-distributed generation e.g. solar PV, wind, waste and co-generation, and CHP generation from renewable and non-renewable sources, with the oldest tariffs dating back to 1998. The highest feed in tariff is for photovoltaics, starting at over €500 Euros per megawatt hour in 2003, and later decreasing to €300 Euros per megawatt hour. Most of the other tariffs have steadily increased and stabilized at between €80 and €120 Euros per megawatt hour. The Portuguese policy was found to have positive impacts over the period 2000 to 2010, with a reduction in emissions of 7.2 mtco2eq, an increase in GDP of 1.557 billion euros, and a creation of 160,000 job years. Long-term impacts are yet to be evaluated as tariffs have not yet expired for the earliest installations. The Philippines Under the Renewable Energy Act of 2008, the Philippine Energy Regulatory Commission can guarantee fixed rate per kilowatt hour, the FIT rates, for power producers harnessing renewable energy under the FIT system. In February 2015, the ERC agreed to give a fit rate of P8.69 per kilowatt hour for 20 years to the Burgos Wind Farm of the Energy Development Corporation. Topic: <laughs> South Africa. South Africa's National Energy Regulator NERSA, announced 31 March 2009 a system of feed-in tariffs designed to produce 10 TWh of electricity per year by 2013. The tariffs were substantially higher than those in NERSA's original proposal. The tariffs, differentiated by technology, were to be paid for 20 years. 
NERSA said in its release that the tariffs were based on the cost of generation plus a reasonable profit. The tariffs for wind energy and concentrating solar power were among the most attractive worldwide. The tariff for wind energy, 1 South African Rand and 25 cents per kilowatt hour, 0.104 euros per kilowatt hour, was greater than that offered in Germany and more than proposed in Ontario, Canada. The tariff for concentrating solar, 2 South African Rands and 10 cents per kilowatt hour, was less than that in Spain. NERSA's revised program followed extensive public consultation. Stefan Giesanger, Secretary General of the World Wind Energy Association said, South Africa is the first African country to introduce a feed-in tariff for wind energy. Many small and big investors will now be able to contribute to the takeoff of the wind industry in the country. Such decentralized investment will enable South Africa to overcome its current energy crisis. It will also help many South African communities to invest in wind farms and generate electricity, new jobs and new income. We are especially pleased as this decision comes shortly after the first North American feed-in law has been proposed by the government of the Canadian province of Ontario. However, the tariff was abandoned before it began in favour of a competitive bidding process launched on 3 August 2011. Under this bidding process, the South African government planned to procure 3,750 megawatts of renewable energy, 1,850 megawatts of onshore wind, 1,450 megawatts of solar PV, 200 megawatts of CSP, 75 megawatts of small hydro, 25 megawatts of landfill gas, 12.5 megawatts of biogas, 12.5 megawatts of biomass and 100 megawatts of small projects. The bidding process comprised two steps. Qualification phase. Projects are assessed based on structure of the project, legal, land acquisition and use, financial, environmental consent, technical, economic development and bid guarantee. Evaluation phase. Compliant bids are then evaluated based on, 1, price relative to a ceiling provided in bid documentation, accounting for 70% of the decision, and, 2, economic development, accounting for 30% of the decision. The first round of bids was due on 4 November 2011. PPAs were expected to be in place by June 2012. Projects should be commissioned by June 2014, except CSP projects expected by June 2015. Topic. Spain Spanish feed-in legislation was set by Royal Decree 1578-2008 Real Decreto 1578-2008, for photovoltaic installations, and Royal Decree 661-2007 for other renewable technologies injecting electricity to the public grid. Originally under the 661-2007, photovoltaic tariffs were developed under a separate law due to its rapid growth. The Decree 1578-2008 categorized installations in two main groups with differentiated tariffs. Building integrated installations, with 34 C euro per kilowatt hour in systems up to 20 kilowatts of nominal power, and for systems above 20 kilowatts with a limit of nominal power of 2 megawatts tariff of 31 C euro per kilowatt hour. Non-integrated installations, 32 C euro per kilowatt hour for systems up to 10 megawatts of nominal power, for other technologies decree 661 2007 SETD up. On 27 January 2012 the Spanish government temporarily stopped accepting applications for projects beginning operation after January 2013. Construction and operation of existing projects was not affected. 
The country's electrical system had a 24 billion euros deficit. FIT payments did not contribute significantly to that deficit. In 2008 the FIT was expected to result in 400 megawatts of solar being installed. However, it was so high that over 2,600 megawatts was installed. Utilities in Spain reported that they had no way to pass on cost increases to consumers by increasing rates and instead accrued deficits, although this is under dispute. Topic. Switzerland Switzerland introduced the so-called cost-covering remuneration for feed into the electricity grid CRF on 1 May 2008. CRF applies to hydropower up to 10 megawatts, photovoltaics, wind energy, geothermal energy, biomass and waste material from biomass and will be applicable for 20 and 25 years, depending on the technology. The implementation is done through the national grid operator SWISSGRID, while high by appearance, CRF has had little effect, as the total amount of extra cost to the system was capped. Since about 2009, no more projects could be financed. About 15 000 projects awaited allocation of monies. If all those projects were implemented, Switzerland could mothball all its nuclear power plants, which currently supply 40% of its power. In 2011, after Fukushima, some local power companies, mostly owned by villages and cantons, provinces, selectively started offering their own tariff, thereby creating a mini-boom. As of March 2012 the KEV fit for solar PV had been lowered several times to CHF 0.30 to 0.40 per kWh USD 0.33 to 0.44 per kWh depending on size, but was higher than in Germany and most of the rest of the world. Taiwan. The feed-in tariff for renewable energy generation in Taiwan is set by the Bureau of Energy. It applies to most of the renewable energy sources, namely solar, wind, hydraulic, geothermal, biomass, waste etc. Thailand In 2006, the Thai government enacted a tariff paid on top of utility-avoided costs, differentiated by technology type and generator size and guaranteed for 7 to 10 years. Solar received the highest amount, 8 baht per kilowatt-hour about U.S. cents 27 per kilowatt-hours. Large biomass projects received the lowest at 0.3 baht per kilowatt-hour at about 1 U.S. cent per kilowatt-hour. Additional per kWh subsidies were provided for projects that offset diesel use in remote areas. As of 2010 March 1364 MW of private sector renewable energy was online with an additional 4,104 megawatts in the pipeline with signed PPAs. Biomass made up the bulk of this capacity, 1,292 megawatts online and 2,119 megawatts PPA only. Solar electricity was second but growing more rapidly, with 78 megawatts online and signed PPAs for an additional 1,759 megawatts. <laughs> Uganda Uganda launched a tariff in 2011. The Uganda Electricity Transmission Company Limited held the transmission license in the country and was mandated by the Electricity Regulatory Authority to provide the following fit for small-scale projects ranging from 0.5 MW to 20 MW. Ukraine 
Ukraine introduced the law on feed and tariff on the 25th of September 2008. The law guaranteed grid access for renewable energy producers, small hydro up to 10 megawatts, wind, biomass, photovoltaic and geothermal. The tariffs for renewable power producers are set by the national regulator. As of February 2013 the following tariffs per kilowatt-hour were applied, biomass, 1.3446 Ukrainian hryvnias 13 euro cents, wind, 1.2277 Ukrainian hryvnias 12 euro cents, small hydro, 0.8418 Ukrainian hryvnias 8 euro cents, solar, 5.0509 Ukrainian hryvnias 48 euro cents. In case of significant fluctuations of the national currency against euro the feed-in tariff adjusts. As of 2018 solar 18 cents per kilowatt-hour. United Kingdom In October 2008 the United Kingdom announced that Britain would implement a scheme by 2010, in addition to its current Renewable Energy Quota Scheme rocks. In July 2009 Britain's then Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change, Ed Miliband, presented details of the scheme, which began in early April 2010, less than a year into the scheme. In March 2011 the new coalition government announced that support for large-scale photovoltaic installations greater than 50 kilowatts would be cut. This was in response to European speculators lining up to establish huge solar farms in the West Country that would have absorbed disproportionate amounts of the fund. On the 9th of June 2011, DECC confirmed tariff cuts for solar PV systems above 50 kilowatts after the 1st of August 2011. Many were disappointed with DECC's decision. It was believed that the total subsidies for solar PV industry were unchanged, but that tariffs for large systems would be cut to benefit smaller systems. The fast-track review was based on the long-term plan to reach an annual installation of 1.9 gigawatts in 2020. In October 2011 DECC announced dramatic cuts of around 55% to tariff rates, with additional reductions for community or group schemes. The cuts were to be effective from 12 December 2011, with a consultation exercise to end on 23 December 2011. This was successfully challenged in the High Court by an application for judicial review, jointly made by environmental pressure group Friends of the Earth and two solar companies, Solar Century and Homesun. The judgment, made by Mr. Justice Mitting after a two-day court hearing, was hailed as a major victory by green campaigners and the solar industry. Lawyers for the Department of Energy and Climate Change immediately moved to appeal the ruling. The appeal was unanimously rejected by the Supreme Court, allowing anyone who installed their systems before 3 March 2012 to receive the higher rate of 43.3 per kilowatt-hours. The 30.7 per kilowatt-hours rate was available for solar systems up to 5 megawatts, and consequently no larger systems were built. Feed-in tariff payments are tax-free in the United Kingdom. As of April 2012, 263,274 systems, totaling 1,152.835 MW, were receiving FIT payments. Of these, 260,041 were solar photovoltaic, totaling 1,057.344 MW. Payments are for 25 years. A typical photovoltaic system costing £7,500 pays for itself in seven years eight months, and generates £23,610 over 25 years. The United Kingdom's feed in tariff ended to new applicants on March 31, 2019. Topic. United States 
In April 2009, 11 state legislatures were considering adopting a FIT as a complement to their renewable electricity mandates. Topic. California The California Public Utilities Commission CPUC approved a feed-in tariff on 31 January 2008 effective immediately. In 2010, Marin Energy Authority launched the first Community Choice Aggregate Feed-in Tariff Program. The program was updated in November 2012, and now offers 20-year fixed-price contracts, with prices varying by energy source, peak, base load, intermittent, and progress towards the current program cap of 1 OMW. Municipal utility companies enacted feed-in tariff pilot programs in Palo Alto and Los Angeles, Palo Alto Clean, Clean Local Energy Accessible Now is a program to purchase up to 4 megawatts of electricity generated by solar electric systems located in CPAU's service territory. In 2012 the minimum project size was 100 kilowatts. Rates of purchase are between 12.360 per kilowatt-hour to 14.003 per kilowatt-hour depending on the length of the contract. The city began accepting applications on the 2nd of April 2012. On the 17th of April 2012, Los Angeles Department of Water and Power's Board of Water and Power Commissioners approved a 10 megawatts fit demonstration program. As of the 1st of January 2010, state laws allowed homeowners to sell excess power to the utility. Previously, the homeowner would get no credit for overproduction over the course of the year. In order to get the California Solar Initiative CSI rebate the customer was not allowed to install a system that deliberately overproduces thereby, encouraging efficiency measures to be installed after solar installation. This overproduction credit was not available to certain municipal utility customers namely Los Angeles Water and Power. Topic. Florida In February 2009, city commissioners in Gainesville, Florida, approved the nation's first solar feed-in tariff. The program was capped at 4 MW per year. As of 2011, Gainesville had increased solar generated electricity from 328 kilowatts to 7391 kilowatts, approximately 1.2% of peak load energy, 610 megawatts. The program was suspended in 2014 after more than 18 megawatts of capacity had been installed. Topic Hawaii In September 2009 the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission required Hawaiian Electric Company HECO and Miko and Helco to pay above market prices for renewable energy fed into the electric grid. The policy offers projects a set price and standard 20-year contract. The PUC planned to review the initial feed-in tariff two years after the program started and every three years thereafter. Project size was limited to 5 MW for the island of Oahu and 2.72 MW for Maui and Hawaii Island. The Commission's decision capped the total amount of feed-in tariff projects brought onto the electricity grid at 5% of the system peak on Oahu, Maui, and Hawaii Island for the first two years. Tier 3 was still pending a decision and order based on the findings of the Reliability Standards Working Group a docket within the docket. Tier 2 and 3 project size caps varied by island and by technology. Tier 2 includes larger systems that are less than or equal to 100 kWAC for onshore wind and inline hydropower on all islands, 100 kWAC for PV and CSP on Lanai and Molokai, 250 kWAC for PV on Maui and Hawaii, 500 kWAC for CSP on Maui and Hawaii, and 500 kWAC for PV and CSP on Oahu. 
Tier 3 covers systems larger than the Tier 2 caps. Topic. Main In 2009 a feed-in tariff bill failed to pass. In June 2009 a pilot program was initiated however, and was available for projects up to 10 MW in size. On 24 April 2013, the Main Utility and Energy Committee was to consider a new bill, LD1085. An act to establish the renewable energy feed in tariff. Topic: <laughs> New York. The Long Island Power Authority (LEPA) adopted a feed in tariff on the 16th of July 2012 for systems from 50 kilowatts AC to 20 megawatts AC and was limited to 50 megawatts AC. As customers cannot use their own electricity, it is actually a 20-year fixed-rate power purchase agreement and LIPA retains the SRECs. The 2012 NY legislature failed to pass legislation which would have opened a New York market for SRECs starting in 2013. Payment is 22.5 per kWh, less than what LIPA paid for peak generation at various times. At an estimated avoided cost of $0.075 per kWh, the program added about $0.44 cents per month to the average household electric bill. <inaudible> Oregon In June 2009, Oregon established a pilot solar volumetric incentive rate and payment program. Under this incentive program, systems are paid for the kilowatt-hours generated over a 15-year period, at a rate set at the time a system is enrolled in the program. The Oregon Public Utility Commission established rates and rules in May 2010. This program was offered by the three investor-owned utilities in Oregon and administered by the utilities. The PUC planned to periodically re-evaluate rates. Program costs were recoverable in utility rates and utility-owned systems were not eligible for the incentive. The pilot program installation cap was limited to an aggregate cap of 25 megawatts MW of solar photovoltaics PV, with a maximum system size cap of 500 kilowatts KW. The aggregate program cap was to be spread equally over four years, with 6.25 MW of capacity being eligible to receive the incentive each year. The aggregate cap was divided, based on 2008 retail sales revenue. PGE had a cap of 14.9 MW, Pacific Power 9.8 MW, and Idaho Power 0.4 MW. Idaho Power's program was limited to residential installations. Rates differed by system size and geographic zone. Small and medium-scale systems participated in a program modeled after net metering. Larger scale systems were competitively bid. Participating PV systems must be grid-connected, metered and meet all applicable codes and regulations. Systems must be permanently installed. Systems sized 100 kilowatts or less could participate based on net metering. Generating capacity of 20 megawatts of the aggregate cap was reserved for the net metering portion, with 12 megawatts available for residential and 8 megawatts available for small commercial systems. These residential and small commercial systems were paid for the amount of electricity generated, up to the amount of electricity consumed. In essence, customers were paid for the amount of utility electric load consumption that is offset by on-site generation. Unlike typical feed-in tariffs, customers can consume the electricity generated on-site and receive a production incentive, or a volumetric incentive payment, for the amount of electricity generated and consumed. 
to remove a perverse incentive to increase electricity consumption to receive a greater payment, the system had to be appropriately sized to meet average electricity consumption. Rates were determined by the puck based on annual system cost and annual energy output, differentiated by geographic zones. The cost estimates were based on installation data from Energy Trust of Oregon. The actual rates paid to the customer generator were the volumetric incentive rate minus the retail rate. The volumetric incentive rates were to be re-evaluated every six months. The rates for the performance-based incentive program ranged from $0.25 cents per kilowatt-hour to $0.411 per kilowatt-hour. Topic. Vermont Vermont adopted feed-in tariffs on 27 May 2009 as part of the Vermont Energy Act of 2009. Generators must possess a capacity of no more than 2.2 MW, and participation is limited to 50 MW in 2012, a limit that increased by 5 to 10 MW per year to a total of 127.5 MW in 2022. Payments were 24 per kilowatt hour for solar, which was increased to 27.1 per kilowatt hour in March 2012, and 11.8 per kilowatt hour for wind over 100 kilowatts and 25.3 per kilowatt hour for wind turbines up to 100 kilowatts. Other qualifying technologies included methane, hydro, and biomass. Vermont's speed program called for 20% renewable energy by 2017 and 75% by 2032. The program was fully subscribed in 2012. Payments are for 25 years. Topic. Puerto Rico The territory operated a net metering program that paid the energy fed back to the grid at the retail rate. The rate varied monthly around 23 cents per kilowatt. The program credited the provider's account each month rather than making actual payments. At the end of the fiscal year June, any excess was paid at a fixed 10 cents per kilowatt of which 25% was retained for public schools. To participate in the program insurance and means for disconnecting the system accessible outside of the building and specific brands of equipment dictated by the government were required. Topic. See also Automatic meter reading Distributed generation Electrical energy efficiency on United States farms Electricity meter Efficient energy use Micro combined heat and power Net metering Power purchase agreement Renewable energy commercialization Relative cost of electricity generated by different sources Smart meter Utility submeter Virtual power plant